You may be thinking, not all page views or marketing channels should be treated equally when it comes to conversions. And you'd be right. Pulling all the interactions from the buyer's journey into a single report is only half the magic. The other half is the ability to use different attribution models. An attribution model lets you apply different credit to each interaction according to the model's rules. For example, some models apply all credit to the first or last interaction in someone's journey, while others use mathematical rules to weigh credit throughout. So, which model should you use? The answer depends on your team's goals and the expected supporting analysis. There isn't a one-size-fits-all for attribution reporting. Test out the different models over time. View your report within the context of larger dashboards or datasets to ensure you're choosing the model that most accurately represents your organization's buyer's journey. With all this in mind, let's review the most common attribution models and their use cases. Single source attribution models assign all the credit to one touch point, usually first touch or last touch. First touch, also referred to as first interaction, gives all credit to the first interaction that led to the desired action or conversion. This is a great model to choose if you're curious about the content or channel that is initially bringing visitors to your site. For example, say a visitor finds your website through organic search. A week later, they see a Facebook ad advertising your products, click the ad and go on to make a purchase. In this case, the organic search would get 100% of the credit for that conversion. Conversely, last touch, often called last interaction, gives all credit to the last interaction that led to a conversion, like a closed one deal. In our example, the Facebook ad would get all the credit for driving the purchase. Then there are multi-touch attribution models. These give each contributing channel a slice of credit for the final conversion. These models are great because they account for the entirety of the buyer's journey. The amount of credit given to each touch point or interaction will depend on the model that you choose. Here are the multi-touch attribution models you're most likely to encounter. Linear attribution looks at all interactions a prospect had before the conversion and gives equal credit to each interaction. Linear attribution is great if your prospects are often in the consideration phase for an extended period of time because it highlights the impact of all your content and messaging during that time. Full path gives 22.5% of credit to the first interaction, to the interaction that created the contact, to the interaction that created the deal, and to the interaction that closed the deal. It then evenly distributes the remaining 10% across all other interactions. Use a full path attribution model to understand how your marketing impacts revenue generation. Time decay gives more credit to interactions that happen closer in time to the conversion. Time decay attribution is ideal if you're measuring the success of time bound efforts like campaigns. To ensure we don't get too abstract with our talk of modeling, Let's review some fictitious examples. Maria runs the paid search and social channels at her company, Avocado Toasted. Maria recently ran a series of Instagram ads to showcase their new avocado toast kits, encouraging users to discover their tasty, affordable recipes. Which attribution model should Maria use to prove the ROI of her efforts and identify what is bringing new traffic to her brand? If you guessed first touch attribution, you're correct. Demand generation marketers who are looking to highlight campaigns that first introduced customers to their brand, regardless of the outcome, really benefit from this model. Keep in mind, first touch attribution doesn't give you much insight into what part of the buyer's journey to optimize. It can also be really difficult to use a first touch attribution report to justify your impact on your company's bottom line. Let's do another one. Charlie works on the blog at a clothing brand called Clean Cut. They provide fashion advice, styling tips, and more. They're looking to increase the number of conversions that their blog posts generate, so they add a pop-up form to the listing page and their highest traffic blogs. 
what model should they use to report on the efficacy of this experiment? If you guessed last touch attribution, you're correct. This marketing attribution model can be really powerful to identify the assets that are actually converting your visitors. Last touch can also be powerful if your business has a short buying cycle. For example, if you know that leads and customers don't usually have many touch points with your brand before buying, a last touch model could help your team unlock some great insights about buying behavior. But there are some important things to consider before using the last touch model. The last touch model ignores influences on the path to conversion. A lead may interact with your company a dozen times before converting, and a last touch model provides zero visibility into potentially influential interactions. So make sure you know what the report shows and what it doesn't. Let's stick with some more complex conversions. Louisa works as a marketer for a lifestyle brand called Catch a Vibe. She's tasked with optimizing the company's landing pages and improving their conversion rates. After some user research, she determines that most people accessing these particular landing pages do so via an email nurturing campaign. The form asks some redundant questions that members of this lead nurturing campaign may have already answered, so she decides to remove some fields and run her test. Which model would help Louisa prove the success of this change? If your answer was time decay, you are on a roll. This model recognizes the significance of every interaction leading up to a conversion while still placing the most value on the activity that actually drove the conversion. In this situation, the report would highlight the influence both the email and landing page played in the visitor's conversion. The touches closest to the conversion, in this case the form, become more valuable as each increases the likelihood of a conversion. Use this model to optimize for touches that drive conversions, as well as for touches that increase the likelihood of a conversion in the near future. This is particularly important when analyzing and optimizing conversion paths and sequences. Let's do one more example just to make sure everyone's got this concept down. Malik just joined a growing company, No Bones, as a new revenue operations manager. He wants to pull three categories of data from the past year, the overall channels, content offers, and initiatives that funneled qualified leads and customers to sales. This information will get him up to speed with what's working and what's not. After taking a look at the team's analytics, he decides to build an attribution report. Which model could help him answer this question? Now, first and last touch attribution will only show him a limited scope of what influences buying behavior overall. These would be great models to use in subsequent report building, especially if Malik was looking at lead generation or improving areas in the buyer's journey. Time decay may work, but it wouldn't give him the most comprehensive story. While it provides excellent attribution for conversion optimization, the time decay marketing attribution model lacks the ability to recognize the interaction which originally introduced the customer to his brand. If Malik needs the full story of how marketing contributed to the company this past year, this isn't the best fit either. This leaves us with either linear or full path. Both could technically work, but here's some advice about the strongest approach. If Malik was just getting started with attribution and needed to get a sense of the overall buyer's journey at his company, linear would be a great way to go. He could start optimizing for the entire buyer's journey instead of just a single activity by assigning credit evenly to each marketing interaction. But linear attribution has its limitations because not every interaction equally propels a customer toward purchase. This model would show low value touches like email clicks equal to high value conversion activities like demo requests. But Malik, as an operations manager, needs to help his teams optimize for particular outcomes in the future. So a full path attribution model would help him identify those high impact conversions while not discounting the assisting conversions. This gives Malik a full story while still accounting for macro and micro conversions. 
Ultimately, it would depend on the exact question Malik needed to answer and what he intended to do with the information that he found. Keep in mind, there are no definite rules in the attribution models you should choose. There are simply ones that fit situations and questions a little more than others. Ultimately, the one you choose will depend on the report you're trying to build and what you need that report for. The more you use attribution models and see how they influence your reporting, the easier this decision will be.